do you sometimes feel overwhelmed like life is moving too fast and you simply can't keep up? Do you get distracted easily and have trouble focusing? First, yes. Well, so do I. For some, this is just everyday manageable stress, but for others, it can signal much more. Did you know as many as 10 million adults could have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, otherwise known as ADHD? It's a mental health condition exhibited by difficulty maintaining attention, hyperactivity, and impulsive behavior. Its symptoms can be deceptive, and if you have the condition, it can take over your life. I'm Jennifer. I have been diagnosed with ADHD in 2008. My name's Steve Lindhorst. I'm 50 years old, and I was diagnosed with ADHD in 2009. In a normal day for me, I may find it easier to say how many times I'm not distracted. It's a constant battle. I tend to become distracted in my thoughts during a conversation, and sometimes I can appear disinterested. It's not just with my children, it's romantic relationships. Um, it was in my marriage, it's friendships. I have my second marriage, and it's still, a, it's still very difficult because my wife has to cope with the results of ADHD. ADHD has affected my relationship with my children in many ways mainly um, because I'm always late. It looks as though I don't care about their event. And I want to be dependable. I feel like over the years I've let people down um, whenever they relied on me for something and I forgot. And it seems careless, but it, was, it wasn't. Getting a proper diagnosis and an evaluation is the best thing someone can do for themselves. It was changed my life forever. When I was diagnosed with ADHD, I felt like there was an answer to those questions. Why am I this way? Why am I this way, but everybody else seems to be that way? I think the hardest part about having ADHD is I feel I've missed out on certain, certain things. And Steve Lindhorst from Paso Robles, California, and Jennifer Gore from Chappaqua, New York, are here. And also joining us is former Harvard Medical School professor and author of Delivered from Distraction, Dr. Edward Hollowell. Welcome to all of you. Thank you so much for being here. That was so moving, Steve. Obviously, you got very emotional at the end of that piece. What do you feel like you have missed out on? Um, a lot of different things, but uh, I think um, it's sort of a... Uh, result of maybe not fulfilling some of the business um, projects that I've started. Didn't really get them to uh, their top level. And so I feel like then as a result, maybe some of the nicer family vacations or some of the, um, just some of the pleasantries in life. So you feel like it's affected you professionally and it's precluded you from providing for your families and yes. family in some ways. Exactly. What about you, Jennifer? What's been the most difficult part of living with this condition for you? Oh, the most difficult part has been the distractibility. Um, for sure, distractibility has affected every aspect of my life. Um, school, unfinished tasks, projects, and relationships. Uh, certainly the relationships with my children uh, have been affected the most. Because you, because you can't focus on them or? Well, that's a good question. Because they talk to me and they think I'm not listening. They think I'm not paying attention. Well, they, are you? I, I am, uh, but <laughs> that's a, uh, sometimes. Um, my thoughts go off in dis directions, and it's not great that I don't have control over it. I get absorbed in a web of emotions um, that consume me, and yet uh, I sort of get this blank stare. I call it, um, I, I just get this blank stare, and they, they look at me and say, are you listening, are you paying attention, and I say I am. I but sometimes is your mind elsewhere? My mind is elsewhere, um, making connections of all, from all sorts of emotions and all sorts of ideas. And I'm trying to stay on task, but there, it just happens. And now I know why. And I say, you know what? I need to um, take a break. Could you excuse me? Can you please repeat that for me? So um, I can But your mind you. basically wanders during My the course of the conversation. My mind wanders sometimes, not all the time. So they think 
sometimes I care and sometimes I don't. And, and that's hurtful to them. And right. I understand their anger and frustration, but um, I'm accountable and I apologize. Dr. Hollowell, I, is, it, is adult ADHD um, on the rise or is it just being diagnosed more? It's not on the rise, it, it, but it is being diagnosed more because we're, thanks to shows like this, we're raising public awareness. In, in fact, most doctors are not aware that it exists in adults. People think of it as a childhood condition. Uh, probably 80% of adults who have it don't know it. But it doesn't happen to you in adulthood. It's something that's simply diagnosed later in life. It's Correct. You, you don't have adult onset ADHD like you have adult onset diabetes, no, for example. No, not at all. You're, you're born with it. This is a genetic, most of the time, it is a genetically transmitted condition. You're born with the predisposition, and then your environment brings it out or not, depending upon what conditions you grow up in. And then, you know, you might, you might uh, have a child and suddenly the organizational demands of life overwhelm you and so your ADD gets diagnosed. Or you might take a job at a busy investment firm and suddenly you can't keep up in the ways that you had been able to before. So depending upon your situation, uh, you may suddenly discover these symptoms and get a diagnosis as an adult, as if you had adult onset, but it's really not. You've had it ever since you were born. You mentioned ADD. What is the difference between ADD and ADHD? Simply the presence or absence of hyperactivity. Uh, if you, and, and most adults who have it don't have hyperactivity. They may be energetic, but they're not, uh, they're, they're not hyperactive. And it's confusing to people unnecessarily so. It's simply the presence or absence of hyperactivity. And, and what is going on in, in your brain when you have ADHD? Well, a lot is going on. <laughs> you know, as you said, it's, it's essentially a state of, of disinhibition. You can't inhibit incoming stimuli, hence you're distractible, but also very curious. And you can't inhibit outgoing impulses, hence you're impulsive, but also highly creative, usually. Um, in terms of neurotransmitters, it has to do with dopamine, epinephrine, norepinephrine, but, but a simple way to think of it is having ADD is like having a Ferrari for a brain, a Ferrari engine for a brain with bicycle brakes. You can't control it all the time. So your circuitry is just going crazy? And, all and often in wonderful ways, but, al but also sometimes in very distracting ways. People with ADD can super focus when they're into something. But, but the mind of the ADD is like a toddler on a picnic. It goes wherever curiosity leads it without any regard for danger or authority. So sometimes it's going off and getting in trouble, and other times it's discovering penicillin. You know? so, and and that's the, it's the blessing and the curse of this condition. To, but if you can strengthen those brakes, control the power of that Ferrari, then you can do very well in life. But if you can't, you know, that's the prison population or the unemployed or the multiply divorced. You know, the, uh, it, 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 and that's what's so intriguing about it. It can be an enormous blessing and it can be an enormous curse. So is there a genetic, there is a Absolutely. genetic component? It runs in families. Uh, uh, I have it, my children have it, you know, and, and uh, my dog has it, he's a Jack Russell, but that's, that's I, don't, I don't know about his lineage, but uh, uh, it, it, is, it is a trait that you're born with. And, and, and as I say, environment brings it out or not.